What was this? I guess maybe they had some kind of a mining operation up here. This was a piece of old mining equipment. It says Hendy SF Cal, San Francisco, California. Wow, whatever it is, it was made in San Francisco and somebody trucked it all the way out here. Isn't that crazy? I wonder what it is. Somebody who's watching this will know. To me, it looks like uh, gears to some kind of mining thing. I don't know. Maybe it was part of a road grader because it looks like over there. It looks like it might have been part of a road grader. I mean, was there ever a road here? I don't know. Maybe that's not a grader. What do I know? I don't know anything about mining or machinery. But what I do know about is amazing cabins in the middle of nowhere in the west. And this one is looking like it's gonna be one of my favorites because just based on the location alone. I mean, if you know anything about these volunteer cabins, especially in Death Valley, the, the, probably the most famous one is over, I guess it'd be that way over um, in Butte Valley over Mangle Pass, um, the geologist's cabin. That's a really well-known Adopt-a-Cabin, volunteer cabin, and it's really nice. I have a, another video on my channel actually showing it, so check that out. Um, and then there's a couple other cabins over there, Stella's Cabin and Russell's Cabin. I've stayed in, I'm not sure which one it was, honestly. Whichever one is the crummiest, I stayed there because the other two were taken. And it was pretty crummy, but I, you know, I have a video of that too. Actually, it's the same video that shows the geologist cabin it was fun man even though it was a crummy cabin it was the first volunteer cabin i ever stayed in and it was so novel that i loved it look here's the outhouse let's check her out the lock is still working whoa look in this outhouse i'm not gonna pee in it because it's got a lot of mouse droppings in there this looks like a hantavirus free for all but look to prevent an intolerable situation please put all paper in the can Oh, so I guess after you go, which by the way, I don't know if you can tell, but this has a fur cover on it. The toilet has a fur cover. Wow. Look at that. Wow. I'm really curious about this light switch, man. It says music rolls. Wow, there's still a thing of baby wipes in here. I mean, look at this weird kind of cloth fabric covering the walls. There's a lot of air fresheners in here. There's even some funny stories you can read. No job is finished till the paperwork is done. <laughs> or how about this? Inflate a potty. I need to go now for kids and adults. That's actually a pretty good idea. Look, here's evergreen toilet paper. Close the loop with toilet paper impregnated with tree grass and hemp seeds. Just add fertilizer. That's cool. And there's some information about composting toilets, a wilderness comfort station. Wow, a lot of reading materials up here. And then that, I don't know if that's like a fly device or what, but okay, I'm not gonna gross you guys out with any more of the toilet. I just thought that was kind of interesting that this outhouse, way the heck out here, in the middle of nowhere is, you know, in pretty good condition. Some old rusty barrels. I don't know what was in that barrel. It's still got a number stamped on it, though. And then here's the first little shack. Let's check this out. I mean, yikes. Does this look like a murder shack? To me, it just kind of looks like a funky little desert shack. And if you were caught out here in a storm, you would be glad to see it. Like when we stayed at Stella's camp or Russell's camp, whichever one it was, it was getting dark and it was cold and windy. And we were so ecstatic to see a cabin that we didn't care how busted, busted up it was inside. We were just happy to be sheltered. So I think you'd probably feel the same here. Some detritus left strewn about from 
previous parties. Look, somebody left their little stove down here. Or maybe this was like a, oh no, maybe some animals got in. Looks like it was, I don't know if that's trash or actually useful stuff. I'm gonna turn it back up right though and I'm gonna put this stove in there just in case it's actually not garbage. Doing my part to clean up. Oh, I wonder what the name of this cabin is. Oh, this is the work shed. That's what I love about these desert cabins. There's usually a work shed. <laughs> you are here constantly fixing stuff. Oh, look at these funky little pliers or pinchers. They're frankly terrifying, but kind of cool. Oh, usual gas cans. It's a nice uh, little shed, man. It's got plenty of uh, natural light windows. Skylight. I mean, the roof's actually blown off. Uh oh, there's a Prince Albert in a can. You always see those Prince Albert cans out here, too. Oh, look, here's a real fancy little cupboard full of garbage. But it's, the interior is in pretty good shape. I mean, I can't impress upon you guys how friggin' remote this cabin is. I mean, you're either facing. <sighs> six, seven miles of bushwhacking down that way to Ballarat, or you're facing that long road we just went up and around and hiked down. I mean, you're not gonna get any Jehovah Witnesses out here, let me tell you. Okay, now let's check out the main cabin. Here's an outdoor workstation of some sort. I mean, it looks like it was wired for like electricity. I don't know what that is. Anybody watching have any idea what this could be? Oh, somebody left a pretty new bungee here. Looks like someone's been here recently. And then, too, if you look at these nuts and bolts look pretty new. Oh, I wonder what that is. Look at the other side. Curious now. I mean, it seems like they had some kind of source for electricity here. I mean, the cabin that we're staying in, the World Beater Mine cabin, that one has electricity, too, so... It's one thing with these desert folk. They are ingenious when it comes to rigging up systems right i mean to me that looks like it's some kind of irrigation thing good luck irrigating this it's a desert man but it's you know they get their snow melt up here i don't know if you can see way back at the top of the valley there's still snow on the top of those mountains and then you come down here to the old homestead i think my sister's already in this cabin seeing all the good stuff so let's go in there and I like to save the best for last, you know, look in all the other outbuildings first before I go into the crown jewel. It's kind of like when you eat a jelly donut and you eat the edges of it first and you save the jelly center for last. Look, there's a bone, man. Yikes. So, old I-beam, part of an I-beam. Looks like this is another kind of workshop area. Tools. Look at this, they got all these little jars hanging here to keep their screws in. That's cool, they just screw it right to the... Oh, that's a fun idea. That Whoever lived here liked Miracle Whip. These are all Miracle Whip jars. Oh, look at this. It's a Coleman something or other that goes up to 600 degrees. Is that a kiln? Or just some kind of a little oven? Interesting. I've never seen one of those. Hmm. Looks like the temperature is around 60 today. I guess that's about right. I mean, I've been hiking, so I'm warm, but... All right, are you guys ready to go in the cabin? Enough beating around the bush. Let's see what is inside. Wow. Holy cannoli. This is unbelievable. This is so different from other cabins I've been to because, well, many reasons. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Look at this old backpack frame. Yikers. Found some antlers too. There's another old backpack frame. Well, backpackers paradise. This place is more interesting to me than many other desert cabins because, I mean, it's, first of all, it's carpeted. It's got shag pile carpeting. It's got upholstered furniture. I mean, all this stuff had to be trucked up here somehow. It's astonishing. Look at all these newspapers. Wow. I killed my children. What made Andrea Yates snap? July 2nd, 2001. I remember that story, man. Look at this guy. 
the battle for the soul of the Boy Scouts. That was August 6th of 01. Isn't that interesting? They've been having the same problems for the last 16, 17 years. So it looks like these magazines aren't really that old. Fall 02. So people lived out here, you know, not too long ago. Look at this. Winter Wolf's Woman. Wow. I might have to take that book with me. I'd love to read it. Then there's Barbara Michaels, Patriot's Dream. Sorry, I'm not holding the camera very well. I love this. Look at this old beer bottle. Isn't this one of those old original Coors Light banquet bottles? Look at this. The Children of Pride. That's my favorite font. Bookman Swash. I mentioned it. Look at this. Black Turtle. Goat Roping Heathens. Oh, I've got another romance novel. Somebody sat out here in this lonely cabin and read romance novels. Love's Pirate. Oh gosh. Cool, man. I can just picture the little lady that sat in here reading these. Probably the same little lady that put these. Look how nice these white lace curtains are. I mean, these are fresh white. They're not dirty at all. It's amazing. Look at these colored drapes. It's actually really nice in here. A little fry basket for french fries. Look at this cool old chest. Oh man, there's a lot of mouse poop in this cabin though, so we gotta be careful about hantavirus. I really wanna see what's in this chest. Let's open it up. Mm -hmm. Looks like just paper and styrofoam. Well, that one's kind of a bust. Then there's that thing. Is that some kind of a light panel? Hmm. Mm -hmm. A little Tupperware. What's in here? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna wash my hands after being in here. Oh, just gravel. Yeah, I wouldn't wanna sleep in this cabin because there's mouse poop everywhere. Oh, hey, look. There's a skull, a burrow skull. I found a burrow skull as we were hiking down and I left it hanging on a tree. I'm gonna try to pick it up on the way back. Oh, I mean, just look at all this stuff. Pruning, how to for gardeners. I mean, they probably had their own uh, little garden out here. Alternative energy source book. Yeah, you'd need that. Chess, Western fruit, berries and nuts. Useful. This, look, oh wow, look at that school. This little living room is so cozy, this cabin. I love it. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, oh, wait a minute, yikes. I mean, did they have to do their own doctor's appointments? Because, like, the nearest doctor is in Trona or Ridgecrest. Maybe they just had a medical fetish. I used to do fetish videos myself for people who have a heartbeat fetish, so you would listen to your heartbeat on a stethoscope like that. It's kind of interesting. Uh, oh, look, there's some binoculars. Cool. Okay, now we're gonna go in the kitchen. Oh, look at this kitchen! Oh my God! Sorry, I got excited. This is beyond adorable. Oh my gosh, look at this old time stove. Dang, a torch bearer. Look at that stove. And even the pot holders and everything are still up here. Look, here's some decorations. Somebody's a boozer. But I just love, like, the way this kitchen is painted and the like, curtains, it's so cheerful. Oh, look, here's a Western, Western Camp Log. Ah, so it is the Western Cabin. I thought so. Cabin maintained by Lightfoot Louie, caretaker of Porter Mine. Look, he's got his own little brand. That's cool. I need to get one of those. Looks like 2013 somebody hiked down here on this day when the last person was here. Look, 11 March 2017, that was 11 days ago. Oh, uh, I think that's one of my competitors in this competition, because look, British Columbia, Canada. All right, well, game on, brother. I'm here too now. The last person here before that was two years prior, official National Park Service visit to clean up area, remove old irrigation piping. Wow, that was November of 2015. Dang, so interesting. Wow, so this cabin really isn't that um, frequented. 
I just love this. Oh my God, this kitchen is beyond cute. I mean, I'm trying not to breathe too deep because of the hand tires. Hi, look at this. I love this. Even a little mirror, this little thermometer, cabinets, like some pots and pans and dishes in there. Whoa. And then like a little Coleman stove. And then this, I don't know if you saw from the outside, was it's a door to a trailer, like a cab over camper that they attached. Oh, and they use that as kind of a pantry. So they keep all their canning jars and aluminum foil. I'm not gonna go in there because it's got a lot of mouse droppings. And then look, there's a little thing of tea. What's that? Iced tea drink mix, powdered iced tea. Tea bags, whoever lived here like tea. And cumin, let's see what this one is. Oh, white pepper, mm -hmm. fancy. But they also had black pepper, dill pickles, and sugar. And then that looks like it might have been trail mix. Wow, far out is trail mix. I've never seen trail mix like this before. But that's what it is, prunes and stuff. Oh, look at those old blinds, yikers. And there's all the firewood. They have it all stacked up here to feed the stove. I'm assuming, or wait, no, that's not a wood burning stove. Huh. Or I don't know, is this a wood burning stove? I don't know anything about stoves. I mean, I know there's the oven, obviously, but where do you put the wood? Victorian era, or maybe it was in here. Oh gosh, I don't know. I don't want to break anything, so somebody watching this will fill me in. Look at that tea kettle, too. That's a hardcore tea kettle. Okay, so that's the kitchen. I mean, it even has this cute little Formica table and chairs. I just think everything about this kitchen is so cute. You go into this room, down a step. Uh, there's a bedroom with a desk. Somebody used to sit here, it looks like, do their computer work. Well, easy chair to sit and look out the window at your garden. Or take a snooze. Looks like this was one of those crossword puzzle magazines, maybe? Variety puzzles, yeah. Oh, I love those magazines. Those books are, those puzzles are so fun. Oh, what's this down here? Oh, it's just wrapping paper. I thought that was like a photo album. I got all excited. By the way, look at this carpet, man. This shag pile. All this, everything in this cabin had to be trucked all the way either up Happy Canyon or around the way I came. That is intense. These people were hardcore. Oh wait, hold on, the fridge. It's a freezer. Looks like there's some trail mix. It's not working. Freezer. Look in the fridge, man. Wow. Guess the mice can't get in here. There's some medical supplies. And some peanut butter. Gelatin. Tabasco, vanilla, wow. Real bacon bits. Far out. It's a well stocked pantry. Oh my god, and I love these old fashioned step stools where that thing. Man, this being in this kitchen kind of reminds me of my grandma's kitchen. Not that my grandma lived in a cabin or anything, but kind of has the same vibe. Alright, now let's keep going through the living room this way. Just to orient you, that was the living room. The kitchen was over there. Now we're just walking straight through from the front door. Oh, this was the bathroom. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Little mirror, look, they had a shower. A chair in the shower. That's pretty nice. And then remember there was an outhouse outside, so you did have to go outside to pee and poo. Here's the storage closets full of their things, blankets, pillows. Infusium 23. Oh, wow. I used to use that on my hair back in the day. That's funny. Look at all these, like, wire strippers and stuff. Interesting. You know, I feel like... Oh, yeah. See, here's where all the electrical stuff was. Circuit A, circuit B. They had it all wired up. That is neat. But I feel like with this cabin, it's gross right now, but it really wouldn't take that much work to clean it up. And even if you just had the supplies at hand, like the food and the blankets and whatnot, I mean, it would be hard. You wouldn't be able to wash the blankets and I'd feel kind of uncomfortable letting them touch my skin, but it seems like you could probably survive out here for a while. 
if you're on the lamb hiding from the law or something, be a good place. I'm going down these real rickety back stairs. Wow, this is the backyard. Wow, okay, there's just so many things to look at back here. Let's go to this trailer first. Man, this old timey trailer kind of reminds me of my old timey trailer. It looks similar, man. I'm not sure the best way to get around to the door is. Oh, while I'm walking around, I think this was some kind of water. It was like a swamp cooler or something. I don't know. Oh, yikes. Look at this ginormous Sapporo. I mean, to give you some perspective. <laughs> it's a two liter Sapporo, dang. Japanese boozers aren't playing. Wow, look at how amazing this little oasis is out here. They, I mean, when the people were living here, it must have been like a beautiful garden back here. And then this little trailer, maybe it was like the artist studio or um, guest quarters. I mean, I thought I read that the Westons, that they call this the Weston cabin because I think a couple named Weston lived here. I think I read online that she, I feel like her name was maybe Helen, used to paint. So maybe this was like her artist studio. I'm gonna go in. I mean, it's full of mouse dropping, so I gotta be careful. But look, yeah, I think it was her. Oh, well, I don't know. It's just Victoria's Secret. Betadine solution. And then here's. <laughs> Is this Victoria's Secret or what? I don't know. I thought it was. I thought that was. Uh, what's her face? And check that models for Victoria's Secret, but I think it's just some regular catalog. Wow, look at these old beer cans. Olympia beer, but it's the old pull tabs. Wow, you guys ever drink Olympia beer? Look, like there's a little medicine cabinet in here. Look how cool that sticker is. Oh, wow. Man, the wood in this trailer is in excellent condition. I mean, it reminds me a lot of my trailer, as a matter of fact. It reminds me of my trailer a lot, a lot. My trailer has the same kind of handles. But this one is real busted inside. I do want to look at this closet though. Just don't breathe, everything will be okay. There's a closet with some pants hanging on a hanger. No, oh, this one just has like a shop vac or something in it. I love how that's so boring, but meanwhile, somebody brought a shop vac all the way out here. Okay, that's not boring, that's pretty hardcore. Drapers and Damon's ladies fashions. There's so many women's clothing catalogs out here. I wonder, maybe she wasn't a painter. Maybe she was a seamstress or why she must have been interested in fashion or something. Okay, I'll go back this way this time. We crouch under this tree. Cause so much more back here I wanna look at. Wow, this cabin is <laughs> really cool. Really cool. I mean the cabin, the location is part of what makes it cool, but the cabin itself is neat too. Look, desert paintings by the artist from the Panamint Range, Norma Weston. Okay, her name wasn't Helen, it was Norma. Wow, oh, there's only one, I thought it was a book. That is so cool, look at that. She painted all this beautiful stuff. I mean, you would have endless inspiration here for sure. Oh man, that is cool. Norma Weston, I bet you had a fantastic life in this little valley. I mean, whatever these dead trees were, probably weren't always dead, or they might not even be dead now. They probably flower and look beautiful. And then this looks like it was where their garden was. Remember they had those gardening books inside? And it's all uh, chicken wired off to keep deer out, I guess. And it looks like they had all kind of raised planter boxes. They probably grew all their own vegetables and fruits. And then maybe did some of into their diet with a little hunting and, you know, nut and berry gathering. I mean, this is like the pioneer lifestyle here. This is really neat. And what's n the neatest of all about it is that it's here in 2017, you know, and anybody who wants to, who has the intelligence and the gumption can come out here and check it out. So friggin' cool. This is definitely one of the coolest cabins I've been to. Okay, I'm back in the kitchen and I noticed something else that I'm curious about. This little like cast iron thing bolted to the wall, screwed to the wall. It says layman's and then at the bottom it says Kid Iron Ohio, Mount Hope, Ohio. So the top flap opens and it's open at the bottom and it has a slot. Like what and why is it bolted to the kitchen? 
doorway. It's interesting. If anybody, I mean, is it like a recipe box? Why would it be open at the bottom then? If anybody knows what this is, please tell me in the comments below or just email me at wonderhussy at gmail.com. I'm curious. We made three trips carrying trash and old black piping out of here. God, three trips. Back to where? I mean, all those are several years old, so back then the road might have still been there. Uh, well, this is 15. I'll return in the fall of the Sierra Club. Cabins, not in great shape. That, but that's I think one of those fighter jets going overhead. Somewhere down there in the Panama Valley. Whew. Anyways, I really enjoyed exploring that cabin, but now it's chilly, man. I hike back out of here, which should warm me up, and get back to the car and then drive back down the road to the world beater mine cabin where we left our stuff. Fire up the wood burning stove, make some hot cocoa, and relax and celebrate another amazing adventure. Well, we finally made it back, drove down, and we got here about an hour ago back to the cabin, which it's, you know, one of those volunteer cabins. We, were, we had the flag up and we put a note on the door saying, occupied, we're staying here. We left a pile of our gear on the floor in the middle. But when we got here, there was another rig parked here and there was two guys inside. The note was gone off the door. I'm just gonna assume that it blew off because it was kind of windy today, but I taped it down pretty well, so I'm not sure about that. The flag, which is really just a windsock, had blown over. So they legitimately didn't know somebody was staying here. They went in and they saw there was a pile of gear on the floor. I guess they just kind of assumed that it was just leftover gear from somebody. I don't know. Anyways, they were already sitting at the table and had gone through about a third of a bottle of whiskey so they weren't going anywhere so we walked in like hey look we're staying here let's all just stay here together and so they cooked their dinner and my sister and I are cooking our dinner we got a fire going I don't know if you can see there's smoke coming out and we're all just gonna bunk together tonight so hopefully it works out they seem like really nice guys older guys two cousins um, but that's what happens out here in the backcountry, man. Sometimes you gotta bunk up with strange bedfellows. Not that we're sharing a bed, but you know what I mean. Um, but I've, actually, I'm not sure of the etiquette of these adopted cabins, like how that works. If you get there and someone's gear is already on the floor, like, eh, I don't know. But it's only 7.30, it's already getting dark. We're cooking dinner. There's a really nice wood-burning stove in there. And we got it. It's nice and toasty inside. It's cold out here, even though it's late March. It's like in the 40s, man. I am freezing. I just came out here because I got to use the outhouse and then I'm going to go back inside, have a glass of wine and eat some Frito pie for dinner with my new friends. So, well, we survived our night in this cabin with these two strange men. Huh. Now, again, a lot of people would go, what are you thinking? Two single women spending the night in a lonely desert cabin with two strange older dudes who were half drunk on whiskey well turned out being fine they were such sweet guys i think they were maybe even more uncomfortable than we were <laughs> and they shared their whiskey with us they shared their steak with us and they even shared their homemade persimmon cookies that they had brought baked from their grandma Ruth's recipe. And let me tell you, those cookies were delicious. I ate way too many of them. So in the end, it all turned out okay. 
And I guess it kind of just goes to show that, you know, don't be so friggin' scared all the time. Like, I know it's exciting and dramatic to want everything to end like a serial killer movie, but the reality of it is sometimes if you just go in, you know, friendly, then you won't have any problems. You'll just make some new friends. At least that's how it worked out for me this time. But that's one of the reasons I love Death Valley. In general, the people that you meet out here in these mountains are pretty cool people. And I can't wait for my next adventure out there.